about the, like Evernote's a good example, we just did the same thing. We lost somebody who had access to a tremendous amount of information for our company. And yeah, I can clean the email, I can, I can take the device, I can do a lot of things, but that Evernote, he would go right home, that's his Evernote. He signed, he started that. So all that information, and not just Evernote, it could be Dropbox. Most of these things, because they're new, we all play them. I, if I signed up with my own email address, my own email address, my right. password. So now all that information I drug there is there. Do you guys do anything? What, um, when we went first went to a CRM, and we put in no and no longer sales associates owned their contacts. The organization did. Um, there's two things. A he could have had those paper files. You know what I mean? Like he could have carried those paper files out with him. And then when the CRMs, it was like, oh, we let a guy go or he quit. We didn't wipe out a CRM quick enough. He's like, you know, if they're gonna do it, they would have already done it, and you can't prevent that, right? So if they were gonna quit and take their contacts or their information. They were prepared when they came and quit, right? I mean, not to be have Debbie Downer there, but same. You have to look at some of that information. What you're talking about is they could have had the their big paper files and have that information, you know. So it's kind of the same when it comes to a little bit of that. We also use um, Zenprize, which is a mobile device server where all of our iPads are on it, so I can see which sales guys are using it or not. And if an engineer wants one, I'd be like, you didn't, you haven't touched your iPad for two years, so can I have it back? Sort of thing. Um, and then that allows you to wipe it, find it, all that kind of stuff. And that wasn't very expensive either to um, implement and, and our IT department to use it. Yeah, I don't we, know if that answers your question. You might be able to help well, too. Well, we, we, re we actually require that anybody in our company uh, uses their, e their company email address for that stuff, number one, so that uh, um, we can always, if we have to reset everything based on that because we have access to that, right? But uh, so we require that they use their own email address. But then also we make the investment. If it's Evernote, we do business Evernote, right? We pay the money for business Evernote, and it's less than a cup of Starbucks every day, right? You know, I always I always get a big kick out of somebody who says, "I'm not going to buy that app. It's six ninety nine, really, six ninety nine, right? For the life of your device and beyond. You know, applications are incredibly inexpensive." And services like an Evernote or a Dropbox or a Box or all those are very affordable for, for most companies to manage users effectively and remove content. Uh, that's actually one of, the, one of the great things that the RepFiles app allows the ma content managers to do is pull stuff back. So like with Dropbox or Box, you know, if, if you share it with somebody, they move it into their account. It's in their account. Um, so one of the things that the manufacturers asked for from RepFiles perspective was we want to be able to pluck that thing right out of there, right? Or turn them off and as soon as they touch it, everything's wiped out of their device. So, but yeah, I'm concerned about that. So we do, we take, we take steps. To and as long as you, um, as long as you, the company provides the means for the, the associate to either have their file stored online and you own that information, they're less likely to go outside and use a different service. Probably they're, they're going to use what you're providing because you're providing what they need. So. This question's for the panel and also any HR individuals in the room. You talked about, Joe, a little bit about going Facebook, uh, following people and stuff, but how much is Facebook and LinkedIn involved in your company's recruiting efforts? And if so, how successful have they been? I use it all the time. If I'm going to hire someone, the first thing I check is LinkedIn to see what their profile says. And I have not hired people because of their LinkedIn profile. They just say stupid things. And you know, if they're going to say something stupid in public on LinkedIn, then they're probably going to use something stupid at work. So <laughs> it's just inevitable. So I, I personally will Google someone before we hire them. You know, there, there are several distributors who have a, a Twitter profile that all they do is list open positions that they have available. And so you, you can follow you know, a, a group of companies, that's, you know, it's Crescent Jobs and Crescent Electric, any job that they have available, they post to their Twitter account and that's, that's all that it's for, is for recruiting people that way. Um, and then, you know, as I mentioned, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, that's the first place I look before I even read the resume. Uh, questions for the panel. Um, I have a personal Twitter account that I started. Um, 
I've considered using it for uh, business reasons and I've kind of held off because I'm afraid of alienating my personal friends that are following me on there. They probably don't want to hear about the latest product that are out there. So my question to you guys is, uh, what are your thoughts on having two separate accounts, one for work and one for personal use? You know, I, I do, as I mentioned, um, and I did it for that reason, uh, because neither group wanted to hear what, what I was trying to tell the other group or trying to listen to from the other group. Um, from certain apps, and, and later on if you want, I can talk to you about different apps that you can use. It's very easy to manage and switch back and forth between the profiles um, so, that it, so that you're not doing that, you're not interrupting you know, what other people want to hear or don't want to hear, alienating them. I would equate it to, I mean, do you have a personal email and a work email? You know, so, you know, most of us probably do in this room. Um, that sort of thing. When I set up our Facebook account, company's Facebook account, a long time ago, I didn't use my personal one at the time. I created a work one, and then because work people wanted to friend me, and I'm like, I don't want you on that side of my life, and um, and so <laughs> I had a separate one to like friend with them and stuff like that. But um, currently, I don't use any social media outlets except for a little bit of Instagram, but not that much. So, um, which is kind of an oxymoron, I guess. <laughs> so. I'll kind of follow up to what you said. I was once told by a boss that take social media as your local newspaper of your hometown. Don't put anything out there that you don't want your mom and dad to read. So I take that to heart. I don't post that stuff because it, it will come back around. I've seen it come back around to friends and family. So it's kind of a good rule to follow. Do either of you guys have a company mobile application? And if so, how are you using it? If not, do you see a need for that? We do. Um, we use it for order entry. Our customers can check their order statuses. They can see their open AR. They can see their closed invoices. The salespeople can go in and check stock. Actually, the customers can check stock, too, at different locations. We do not. We're 100% industrial, so most of our customers are behind a desk a lot of the day, so the mobile app didn't seem like a wise investment, but we did have a trade show where we did a mobile app. John used it to track leads. Um, it was more of like a, hey, cool, we got an app. I don't know that I would make the investment to do it again because our customers were kind of like, you know. It wasn't that, I mean, the event wasn't big, I don't know. It was cool to say we had it. Um, Um, on, the, on the app side for distribution, going back to our conversation earlier regarding uh, with the, the prior panel regarding Home Depot and Lowe's and, and all of that Amazon kind of stuff, uh, if, your, if your customer base is highly mobile uh, and is capable of, use, of shopping with a mobile app, my feeling is, is that if your app is not as good as any of your competitors out there as far as the ability to search for product, right, log in and get their own pricing, the ability to scan barcodes um, to return product information, those customers will slowly migrate to the path of least resistance. And it's essential if you have a mobile customer base that you're going to have to have a very quality mobile shopping experience for them. You know, to, to John's point, I, I think we've all learned it's a lot easier to keep the business you have than to get new business. Um, for everybody, we're, we don't have one, but we're, we're in that uh, phase right now of developing one. Um, I get it's, it's every company's decision if, if you want to be on which end you want to be. Uh, where everybody's already made their decision of who they use and, and where they are, and then you bring one in and try and get business back, or if you do it to stay competitive and, and maintain the business you have. 